السلام عليكم اليوم بهذا الفيديو راح أكمل لكم الجزء الثالث والأخير من موضوع الأرثوغناثيك سيرجري In this part I will talk about the maxillary orthognathic surgical procedure and also other orthognathic surgical procedure the sequence of the treatment, retention and relapse and finally the 3D development in orthognathic surgery First of all I will talk about the maxillary orthognathic surgery The most common and the most popular surgical procedure in the maxillary orthognathic surgery is the Lefort 1 osteotomy. As seen in this picture, this is the Lefort 1 osteotomy. Cutting of the Lefort 1 osteotomy in the maxilla from one deprosity to another deprosity in the other side, as seen in this picture. This, this surgical procedure used to move the maxilla in any direction. We can move the maxilla in interior forward direction, backward, and also superior and inferior. And most commonly used for forward direction, forward movement of the maxilla. In the backward, there is a limitation in the movement of the maxilla. As seen in this picture, this is the terigo maxillary plate. This is the terigo maxillary plate. The width of this plate, about 5 mm. The movement of the maxilla backward, 2 mm. We can move the maxilla 2 mm. Not more than 2 mm because there is possibility of hitting of this trigoid plate. To prevent hitting trigoid plate, so the movement, there is a limitation in the movement. 2 mm. So most commonly used for forward movement and also can be used for superior and inferior direction. As seen in this picture, this is the incision from one deprosity to another deprosity on the other side. And then with the help of the osteotome, separating the maxilla. The incision through mucosa, submucosa, facial muscle, and periosteum. Then dissection of the anterior maxilla and dissection of the nasal cavity. Then stabilizing by mini plate and screw according to the treatment plan. Then sutureing of the soft tissue. This is the surgical procedure that most commonly used for forward movement in the maxilla. Leaf fort one osteotomy. The other surgical procedure, as we remember in the mandibular orthognathic surgery, then it's subapical osteotomy or segmental osteotomy. This for to movement for movement of uh, Dental alveolar structure, moving dental alveolar structure in any direction, anterior, posterior, most commonly. Moving of the anterior segment or posterior segment. Anterior segment is called anterior cerebral osteotomy, and for posterior segment is called posterior cerebral osteotomy. And most commonly used for biomaxillary protrusion. As seen in this picture, this is the surgical procedure anterior cerebral osteotomy. Most commonly used for those patients. Uh, have tooth indicated for extraction on the extraction side from canine to canine or from premolar to premolar to move the dental alveolar area and this rarely used today because most of the most of the problem can be treated by orthodontic alone also this posterior subapical osteotomy to move the posterior area posterior segment dental alveolar area for uprightening or moving protrusion or protruded movement according to the treatment plan the incision from 4 or 5 from the premolar to the deprosity help with osteotome and then also stabilized by mini plate or screw the other surgical procedure is the leaf or two osteotomy as seen in this picture the cutting of the leaf or two osteotomy pyramidal in shape from the maxilla lateral border of the nasal cavity and lateral border of the orbit as seen in this picture with the ethmoid bone this is the, the pyramidal in shape this most commonly used to correct the dentofacial deformity midfacial deformity as seen in this picture then the stabilized area we can move the midfacial area in any direction and then stabilization by mini plate and screw as seen in this picture This is the stabilization. Then the Lee 43 osteotomy. Lee 43 osteotomy also most commonly used to treat mid facial 
area, mid-facial hypoplasia or mid-facial deformity that including the inferior border of the orbit and also the zygomatic bone and see in this picture, this is the cutting from the zygomatic bone, inferior border of the orbit and the ethmoid bone this is the L42 or L43 osteotomy for those patients with severe mid-facial hypoplasia or deformity and then fixation by mini plate and screw the surgical procedure L43 most commonly used in those patients with the craniosteosis syndrome as we know some of the bone or most of the bone of the skull and face separated by the suture if the suture close prematurely so this led to the abnormal shape of the face and the facial area and the maxilla because the skull moved toward the opening suture not toward the closed suture so leading to the abnormality also premature closure of this suture led to the abnormal shape or abnormal development of the brain because not enough space for correct development of the brain so those patients may suffer from mental disability one of the craniosteosis syndrome, such as Crozen syndrome and also Apert syndrome. Crozen syndrome, as seen in this picture, prematurely close of the suture between the skull, as seen in this picture. Patient suffer from midfacial hypoplasia, exophthalmus in the eye, abnormal shape of the skull, and also retrusion of the maxillae. And also other syndrome. Is apart syndrome. Apart syndrome also premature closure of suture, as seen in this picture, a broad skull, abnormal shape of the skull, in of thalamus, and reduce the height, vertical height of the maxilla and retrusion of the maxilla. Those patients with apart syndrome and crossing syndrome need L43 osteotomy to correct the midfacial area and also L41 osteotomy to correct the retrusion of the maxilla. As seen in this picture, the L43 osteotomy, the incision by coronal flap, it's called by coronal flap, few millimeter behind the hairline, and then correct the midfacial area, and then stabilization by mini plate and screw. This is the L43 osteotomy, most commonly used for craniosynthesis syndrome, craniosynthesis syndrome. That's those patient uh, premature. Closure of the suture of the skull. The other orthognathic surgical procedure is rapid palatal expansion device or surgical procedure. This rapid palatal expansion surgery is for lateral maxilla deformity in the lateral of the maxilla to wide the maxilla in lateral dimension for those patients with severe lateral deformity in the maxilla. As seen in this picture, Osteotomy, we do osteotomy in the lateral border or in the lateral dimension of the maxilla and mid-palatal suture. And after two to five days, it's followed by mechanical device. Place mechanical device towards the maxilla in lateral dimension. Ask the patient to move by, give the patient key to move the mechanical device. Each movement once a day. Once per day, the movement 0.25 mm. This rapid palatal expansion, because surgical expansion, this mostly can be mostly used in the early age, at any age, at any time in early age, to take the advantage of growth. As seen in this picture, for lateral maxillary deformity. The other orthognathic surgical procedure is destruction osteogenesis. Destruction osteogenesis, this is the method for regenerating a new bone by gradual stretching of the divided bony segment with the use of the mechanical device as seen in this picture. This is called osteodestructor. To lengthen the bone, especially the mandible, for those patients with severe hypoplasia, severe dentofacial deformity, out the limit or beyond the limit of the of the surgery. The advantage of this, this surgical procedure against other surgical procedure not require of the bone graft. 
and also stimulate the generation of the surrounding tissue and also feasible to repeat this surgical procedure and also the simple technique with minimal blood loss for the children the idea of how this device or this surgical procedure by move, make the cut the surgeon make the cut in the bone this cutting will then place mechanical device this is the same the idea as in this picture previous slide this is the same idea of rapid palatal expansion make osteotomy and this osteotomy by help of other mechanical device generate force this force generate a new bone formation in the osteotomy area to lengthen the bone in the rapid palatal expansion to widen the bone to widen the maxilla and most commonly occur in the in the early age we can do this surgical procedure in the early age to take the advantage of the growth this is the same principle the section osteogenesis is the same principle this is similar to the fracture healing until they are interrupted by the force this force by mechanical device osteodestructor as seen in this picture this osteodestructor generate tension this generation of the tension in the tissue connect the bony segment generate a new bone formation and this led to the length of the bone due to the force by the mechanical device so ask the patient give the patient key for movement for moving this uh, device once per day each movement 0 0.25 millimeter per a day to lengthen the bone generate a new formation this most commonly used for those patients with hemifacial microsomia, also for those patients with Bear Robin syndrome and Trigger Collins syndrome, for those patients with severe dentofacial deformity beyond the surgical limit. This is the same idea, the same principle of destruction of, of uh, rapid palatal expansion. Destruction osteogenesis, the same rapid palatal expansion, making osteotom to generate a new bone formation. Destruction osteogenesis also can do it in any age but prefer early to take the advantage of the growth as seen in this picture this is the mechanical device or osteodestructor to generate a new bone formation the osteotomy side stimulates soft tissue and also stimulates the new bone formation the other surgical procedure is the surgery of obstructive sleep apnea Obstructive sleep apnea, those patients suffering from repeated, partial or complete obstruction of the airway during sleep. Those patients, the option of the treatment, because before the option of the treatment, as we know, the orthodontic treatment treats the dentofacial deformity, but also can treat the, the obstructive sleep apnea. But the aim of the treatment differ in the obstructive sleep apnea and those patients with dentofacial deformity. Also, we can differentiate those patients with dentofacial deformity and those patients with obstructive sleep apnea. Obstructive, uh, obstructive sleep apnea always obese patient. Obese patient, most commonly obese patient, and uh, patient with middle age, and also need move to maxilla, not in the good health. The obstruction in the upper airway need to move the maxillar mandible forward to open the airway. And dentofacial deformity, the patient with dentofacial deformity, mostly adulthood or childhood with good health. No anatomical obstruction or defect or problem. The option of the treatment of those patients with sleep apnea, non-surgical treatment and surgical treatment. Non-surgical treatment by, as the patient, by the procedure, positive airway, as the patient to wear the oxygen mask during the sleep to reduce this obstruction during the sleep also if the patient not tolerate this oxygen mask we can use another method oral appliance this oral appliance where the patient wear the oral appliance during the sleep does get the mandible the maximum in the forward position help to open the airway guide them or move them the maximum mandible in about 10 millimeter or more this is the non-surgical method the surgical method for treat those patients, we can treat those patients with bariatric surgery, especially those patients with very obese 
and also with cardiac and hyper cardiac problem and hypertension. Also, other surgical procedure is peleto uvulo peleto plasticity from its name uvulo peleto plasticity. Move peletal tissue from the soft pellet, also from the uvula and from lateral pharyngeal wall to reduce the obstruction during the sleep. Also, those patients with severe obstructive sleep apnea and also with the cardiac disease, the other surgical treatment is tracheostomy. Have success rate to treat those patients with obstructive sleep apnea. The other surgical treatment is the orthognathic surgery. Orthognathic surgery play an important role and have success rate in treating those patients by moving the maxilla and mandible more than 10 mm to open the airway. So also play an important role in and sex have sex high, high success rate for treating those patients. Then I will talk about the sequence of the treatment. The sequence of the treatment of any surgical orthognathic surgery, any orthognathic surgical treatment. The sequence of the treatment first extraction. Extraction, the aim of the extraction is for the leveling and alignment or for relieve the crowding. Relieve the crown first, relieve the crowding, and remove the tooth that interfered the ostomy side, especially the wisdom teeth. Most of the surgeons prefer to remove the wisdom teeth, erupted or not erupted, because may interfere in the ostomy side, especially in the mandibular orthognathic surgery. So first sequence of the treatment is extraction. This is in the any surgical, any orthognathic surgical treatment. The second sequence is the pre-surgical orthodontic. The aim of the pre-surgical orthodontic treatment, alignment and leveling and coordination. Coordination meaning that the arch be compatible with each other. After surgery, also decompensation and creation of the ostotomy cut if the segmental surgery is required. This is the aim of the pre-surgical orthodontic treatment. Let's take about one year and one year and a half according to the case, according to the difficulty of other case. The pre-surgical orthodontic treatment also act as the method for intermaxillary fixation, intraoperatively and postoperatively for attachment of elastic, elastic attachment. So this is the aim of the pre-surgical orthodontic. There is two exceptions of pre-surgical orthodontic. Two, two exceptions. First, in the case of anterior open bite, Attempt to level the arch before surgery will lead to the extrusion of the upper incisor. This extrusion is unstable. In this case, the interior and posterior segment are aligned in separate segment. So the space is made between two, these segment. And the arch is leveled by aligning the segment surgically. To prevent this problem. So not treated until open bite before orthognathic surgery. And this is the first exception. The second exception, those patients in the class 2 cases presenting with deep overbite and reduce the face height. The lower arch is not leveled before surgery. When the mandible is advanced, the lower incisor position ensures the lower face height is increased. So, not treat those patients with the class 2 deep overbite because this increases the lower facial height. This is called a three point landing. Why three point landing? Because there is because the contact only between the incisors and only between the pre, the molars. There is no contact between the premolars, so I need the exclusion of the premolars surgically or after the surgical treatment. So to prevent this problem, until open bite, not treated before surgery, to prevent separate the posterior segment and anterior segment. And also, those patients with the class 2 with op or deep op overbite to prevent and increase our facial height and uh, prevent, uh, the, uh, prevent not contacting, uh, prevent, uh, uh, prevent extrusion of the premolars after surgery. So, there's two exceptions. The advantage of the pre surgical orthodontic treatment the soft tissue environment may be conductive for soft tissue. Environment, the soft tissue environment may be conductive more to some orthodontic movement 
Once the skeletal pattern is co corrected, to be conductive soft tissue environment for mild movement. So this is the most important point in the pre-surgical orthodontic treatment. Take one year and and one year and a half. Follow this treatment, pre-surgical orthodontic treatment, a new record, new radiographic examination, new clinical examination, all should be taken before the surgery. And then surgery. Surgery involves, after the surgery, involves patient stay one, three days after surgery, depending on the complexity of the procedure. Really, really the, the lower incisor, this means that the patient in the previous, in the past, upper and lower incisor, fixed by intermaxillary wire. This rarely used or less used today because of the development of the mini plate and screw. Mini plate and screw, this facilitates the treatment and reduce the morbidity both operatively and also um, make the oral hygiene of the patient uh, more comfort or uh, less difficult oral hygiene by mini plate and screw than with the ligature wire or intermaxillary fixation wire during operative during uh, surgical treatment. This is the surgery, then followed by post-surgical orthodontic treatment. This takes about three to three to nine months, also according to the case, and by use round wire. In the pre-orthodontic, pre-surgical orthodontic treatment, use fixed appliance, rigid wire. But this post-surgical orthodontic treatment, round wire, round wire and uh, take uh, three months to nine months according to the difficulty of the case. The aim of the post-surgical orthodontic complete any movement that not corrected or not uh, moved before the surgery or during the surgery. And also for uh, that root paralleling at any segmental osteotomy site, root paralleling. This is a very important point in the post-surgical orthodontic or most important advantage of the post-surgical orthodontic treatment. Then I will talk about retention and relapse. Relapse can occur as the conventional orthodontic treatment. So, retainer is very important. Post-surgical orthodontic, patient should wear, patient uh, should wear the retainer. Because uh, to prevent the relapse, relapse can be defined as the movement of the segment back to their original position before the surgery. So, many of the factors that associated with post-treatment relapse. This is associated with factor. We can divide this factor into three divisions. First, surgical factor. For example, poor planning, poor treatment planning from the beginning. The other surgical factor, the size of the movement. For example, movement of the maxilla more than five to six millimeter and movement of the mandible more than eight millimeter. This have tendency to relapse. Also, direction of other movement. Then, destruction of the gondial, gondolar head out of the unit fossa also have tendency to relapse. Inadequate fixation. This is the surgical factors. The other factors is orthodontic factor. Orthodontic factor also poor planning. Movement of the teeth into the zone of the soft tissue pressure. Therefore, treatment should be placed or plan to ensure that the teeth will be in the zone of the soft tissue balance postoperatively and that the lip will be competent as possible. Meaning the tooth teeth between in the neutral zone between lip and cheek externally and tank internal and this is the neutral zone, not too intruded or too protruded, this have susceptibility to relapse. So the teeth must be in the neutral zone between the lip and cheek externally and the tongue internally. Extrusion of the te teeth during alignment tend to relapse post-treatment, particularly in the case of anterior open bite. This is all the orthodontic treatment. Patient factors. Patient factors 
the nature of the problem. For example, anterior open bite associated with abnormal habit. Difficult to treat successfully, as seen in this picture. Abnormal habit, digit sucking, thumb, su thumb sucking, tongue thrust, have tendency to relapse. Also, in those patients with the cleft lip and palate. Advanced of the maxilla is difficult and prone to relapse because of the scar tissue. Also, those patients have tendency to relapse. And finally, the patient factor failure to comply with the treatment. For example, patient does not wear the intermaxillary elastic attraction as instructed. Those are the most common factors that associated with relapse or have tendency or increased tendency to relapse. Then I will talk about the complication of orthodontic surgery. Complication like other surgical procedure, patient may suffer pain. So, surgeon prescribe analgesic to reduce the pain. Also, patient may suffer swelling, especially in the lip, because especially in those patients with intraoral procedure, lip abraded, especially in the corner, stretch and abraded, and this is the swelling after one day after the surgical treatment. So it can be treated by medicated cream or Vaseline to reduce the swelling. Also bleeding, patient may suffer from bleeding, bleeding from the nose or bleeding in any areas, bleeding from the nose, especially in the maxillary orthognathic surgery. And this resolve one to two weeks after surg surgical treatment. Also infection, like other surgical procedure, patient may suffer from infection. So prescribe antibiotic postoperatively to prevent any type of the, of the infection postoperatively. Also, patient may suffer numbness, numbness in the lower area, in the lower lip, in the symphysis area, in the lower surgical procedure, also in the upper interior area, in the upper interior teeth, in the upper surgical procedure. This numbness may, for, may occur for four months to six months, and really this is temporary and really, really permanent numbness. Limited mouth opening. Also, patient may suffer limited mouth opening. TMJ problem. TMJ problem can also occur the stiffness in the jaw. So ask the patient to speak, swallow, to move his jaw to prevent this stiffness or reduce this stiffness postoperatively. Change in the facial appearance also due to the surgical treatment and dietary change and weight loss, especially after one week after surgical treatment. Patient may suffer from loss of his weight 5 kilogram, about 5 kilogram, 2 to 5 kilogram due to surgical treatment and fixation, intermaxillary fixation. Also problem with the swallowing, ophthalmic complications especially in the leaf 43 osteotomy and finally reduction in the auditory capacity. This is the most common complication uh, in the complication of orthognathic surgery. This all complication and all treatment possibility should discuss with the patient preoperatively. Stability of the orthognathic surgery. Stability of the orthognathic surgery, we can divide the stability. Procedure very stable or stable, stable need rigid fixation or problematic procedure. Very stable procedure. Those procedure maxillary upward movement mandibular forward movement, chin in any direction. This is very, very stable procedure. Mean, mean that less relapse. Also stable, stable maxillary forward. Moving of the maxilla forward, this is the stable procedure. Also maxillary asymmetry, also stable procedure. Stable but need rigid fixation. If maxillary upward movement, movement of the maxilla in upward direction with mandibular forward movement. This is stable but need rigid fixation. Also, if the maxilla forward movement with mandibular backward also need rigid fixation. Mandibular asymmetry also need rigid fixation. Problematic. Problematic any backward movement. In the maxilla on the mandible, this is problematic. In the mandible, due to the pterygo maxilla rejection, as we remember, to prevent hitting of the pterygoid plate, so there is a limitation in the backward. So, backward movement of the maxilla and backward movement of the mandible also pr problematic. Maxillary downward and maxillary wider, meaning in lateral dimension. This also a problematic procedure.
Then I will talk about the future development in orthognathic surgery. Future development, as we know, the conventional surgery, we use cephalometric OBG. The cephalometric and OBG or clinical examination with the cephalometric and OBG, this will provide 2D dimension about the surgical procedure. This 2D dimension about the surgical procedure, the development today, CBCT, combined computed tomograph. This development make the procedure more safe, more faster, and provide the clinician with information, 3D information about the osteotomy site. 3D information about the surgical area. As seen in this picture, this is 3D formation and also provide information about the quality of how the bone, quantity and the quality of how the bone, about, about the position of the inferior avion nerve to prevent hitting of anatomical structure. As seen in this picture, this is the 3D dimension. As seen in this picture, CBCT or cone beam computed tomograph provide information about anterior of the maxilla or mandible as seen in this picture this anterior of the maxilla and mandible or all the jaw 3D information also this information combined with CBCT and facial camera 3D information about the surgical area also planning of the treatment you can plan the treatment in the computer as seen in this picture this is the inferior view and nerve those patients with bimaxillary protrusion and also we can fabricate the surgical supplement by computer it is called virtual surgery as we are familiar with the CADGAM technique computer aided design also there is surgery aided design what we call virtual surgery meaning that the clinician can do the surgical treatment or the surgery before doing it in the operative, in the operative room by the computer, you can do it on the computer. Also, treatment planning on the computer. This to provide more and more information about the anatomical area, about the side, and calculate the safest point for cutting, and make uh, more comfortable, make the treatment more comfortable to the patient and uh, to the surgeon. And also, patient can see his or herself on the computer before doing the surgery on the operating room and all the information can send to the operating room by the data this is the virtual surgery by orthognathic positioning system this orthognathic position sent all the information to the data in the operating room this guides the surgeon to the correct position safest anatomical area and have success rate more comfortable more faster treatment and have success rate So 3D, 3D development in orthognathic surgery change our opinion in the term of diagnosis and treatment planning of combined orthodontic treatment and orthognathic surgery. Finally, I will talk about the post-operative care. Post-operative care, diet is very important after the surgery to accelerate the healing process. Liquid is coming. Liquid diet is coming, especially after one week, the first week after the surgical treatment. Also, teeth cleaning is very important, four to six times by using soft brush, smooth, this is a small and soft brush, and clean the surgical area, and also prescribe to the patient uh, mouthwash, chlorohexidine mouthwash is very important. And for some surgery, patient may be mini may be. Uh, pain may be minimal, so prescribe analgesic and also if there's any infection, antibiotic to prevent any infection. Also, the speech will be improve, improved with the practice. This is the post-operative care, the instruction to the patient. Nasal congestion can occur to the patient. And this prescribed nasal spray to the patient and ask the patient to force the spray into the nose until test the medication and the congestion relief to two to three minutes and then resolve completely one to two weeks after surgical treatment also the surgeon will see the patient this is very important for checkup to check that the healing infection and to make sure nothing has moved 
after one week, the follow up after one week, then three months, six months, and one year to show that everything is okay. Yes, the post-operative care. And finally, I will talk about the sequence of the treatment or the, not the sequence of the treatment. I will talk about the key point or the principle of any surgical orthognathic treatment. The most key point or the conclusion of this lecture, orthognathic surgery is aimed at correcting dentofacial deformity. We must know the aim of orthodontic treatment, to correct the dentofacial deformity. Also, it is indicated for those patients with severe skeletal or dental valve problem that are the limit of orthodontic alone. And then planning and treatment should be undertaken by multidisciplinary team. Should cooperate, there is a cooperation, should cooperation between the maxilla, facial surgeon, and ortho, orthodontist, and all the treatment options, all the complications should discuss with the patient. This very important point. Also, other important point, the typical sequence of the treatment is the construction phase of the pre-surgical orthodontic surgery and then shorter phase of the post-surgical orthodontic treatment. The aim of the pre-surgical orthodontic treatment, alignment and leveling of the arch, decompensation and creation of the space for the osteotomy cut. Fixed appliance used pre-surgical aim provide a method for intermaxillary fixation during surgery and after surgery for the method of intermaxillary elastic attachment, post-operatively. Post-surgical orthodontic aim to correct any movement not undertaken at surgery. This is the aim of the post-surgical orthodontic. And also root paralleling at osteotomy site. This is the aim of the post-surgical orthodontic. Finally, development in the 3D technology change our approach in diagnosis and treatment planning of combined orthodontic treatment and orthognathic surgery. إلى هنا انتهت محاضرتنا محاضرة الأرثوغنثيك سيرجري أتمنى استفادتكم من هذه المعلومات من هذه المحاضرة إن شاء الله نلقاكم محاضرات أخرى في مجال مختلف مجالات طب الأسنان شكرا لحسن استماعكم